Hello everyone, my name is the Shepherd Killer, and today I'm going to be trying to do something different. Um, recently today I decided to make a tier list for the FNAF World chips available within the game. Now, I had just created this, um, the link is right here, where you can create your own tier list, and I'll probably have it in the description below but simply put and obviously i have my own dark theme so when you look at it it's going to look weird but don't worry these will all be perfectly okay when you place them in the background and i'll actually show like say block jump scare you can see you can see the graphic better on the darker background than the lighter but that's whatever so I wanted to make this because with FNAF World and the many chips there are, you know, there, there's always questions of like which ones are really good, which ones are bad, and which ones are okay. So I kind of wanted to start doing something like this, and I actually told a friend who I've done FNAF World speedruns with in the past about a tier list and they thought it would be interesting so I sent them the link so now it's gonna take a lot of thought to make something like this for a tier list because obviously this is my first time doing a tier list but of course you know with my experience with FNAF World I actually do have an idea of how things go with this game and I am very familiar with each of the chip sets. So I do remember like which ones are pretty great and which ones aren't. Now this is gonna be an honest opinion from someone who's done speedruns of Finite Freddy's World because, you know, and, and who's done Nuzlocke challenges because the, the, the funniest thing is with like when you do FNAF World, obviously you have a certain mindset which characters and which chips and which bites are actually good and which ones are bad. But when you do Nuzlocke, it's actually very different. It's a completely different outlook. And it seems like we've already got our tier list. <laughs> From Halo here. Run, luck, endless speed, auto, shield, find characters are the best ones, gift boxes and unscrew are good, um, endless strength, curse status, fertile fury, pizza fury, endless defense, ever comet, strong or average, ever comet, weak, head start, speed, strength, defense, um, counter bite, block, jump, scare, and then auto mimic, quick start party, and auto region. Could probably use more thinking. I'm just going to tell him. <sighs> yeah, I'm just going to tell him that. But yeah. Because mine are all categori categorically sorted. Because, as you can see, the chips are all lined up by the colors that they are, because these are supposed to be like, which ones are supposed to be the low grade and which ones are supposed to be the high grades, but of course, you know, there, there's always gonna be ones that are better. So, what about the green chips? Well, all right, we have to start with like the green chips first because I think that's one one we're gonna have to go through first, and then we'll go through the blue chips and then the red chips. So, I think I'm gonna do this, cause run luck is very late. Um, quick start party, and it's like, I believe it's ever comic run luck and then block jump scare that's like the order i mean i have no idea these are these are just me trying to figure out which ones would work okay um 
The one that catches my eye is like Quick Start Party. Quick Start Party essentially lets you get an attack off. That's a pretty good green chip move. So, like for early game, it's really good. And especially for bosses, you, you really do need some early attacks on some bosses. If you're not as experienced. So this would actually be my first ship to go to. Um, yeah, I'll just finish a note of. <sighs> Ever comic weak. Even though it does damage, it's really not a good ship. Like, it, it does very minimal in what it does in its performance. So it's not really a good chip altogether. Like, like I'm just thinking, like, in terms of their use, like, how useful are they? Like, ever comic weak, even though that one does output damage, it doesn't really output a lot. Now, I have seen on the wiki that Depending on which character you've used last, in terms of their strength, will actually determine the outcome of their damage. So, like, um, Fretal Fury and Pizza Fury, those are dependent, and same with the Ever Comics. But, Ever Comic is not really a useful chip. Especially because it doesn't really attack so much at all in the battle. It's probably, like, if, if you have generally quick battles, it's probably, like, one, two, maybe three times. So it's not really that big of a damage dealer than the rest. Um, I consider block jump scare as a pretty good one because um, there, there's a few bosses that actually have jump scare. Like um, the, the main one is Bubba, that one. That one jump scares so much, it actually does get annoying. But, you know, it's very good for not having to have your attacks being delayed because, you know, you have to wait for, like, who knows how long. Because sometimes the jump scare attacks against you can last quite a while. So... Having that is pretty good, and also because when you're in a um, black tomb yard, that area has a like it's completely filled with enemies that can jump scare. So that's also quite a risk to deal with. Um, run luck is really good too. Here, I'll. So, like, block, jump, scare, run, luck, and then quick start. Like, those three. Like, run, luck, it increases your chances of running away faster. So, in speedruns, this is a good chip to have. It's one of the greater chips to have. In terms of the head start chips, um... I'd actually consider... Head start speed as like an average. Eh, nah. All of them are actually pretty mediocre. Because um they have the endless variants that are much better. Later on, so like Strength, speed, and defense. Yeah. Yeah, all of them, even though they do give you a head start bonus on just about everything, it's only for the beginning of the battle. It doesn't actually do the entire battle. So you kind of have that there to deal with. Like, it's good for a start, but it's not good for a long battle so unless you want short battles it, it's not really much um but yeah that'll actually conclude the green chip tier tier rankings um 
I mean, I actually could. I mean... Yeah, yeah, th this will do. <sighs> so now we have the blue tiers to the blue chip tiers to go through. Um, already I can see like average strength for average strength, speed, and defense. Like these are much better than the Head Start counterparts. Um, actually, I would consider speed higher than strength and defense, because not all attacks are affected by the strength buff, and defense is quite lackluster in FNAF World. Generally, getting the armors is actually a better option, because it actually does reduce your damage. It take... It does reduce your damage take. Your yeah, damage intake from the enemies that are attacking you, but like, it's not gonna help on certain attacks where it's one shot anyways. And once again, strength is not that much, but endless speed. I see this used a lot in speedruns, and I've done this before. Endless speed is a really good chip. It it is. With Quick Start Party and Endless Speed, those are two very optimal chips. Because not only do you get the advantage of starting early and being the first one to attack in a battle, you also get the advantage of having faster attack output. So, Endless Speed, I would consider two tiers higher than its head start. Strength and defense is just average in general. I mean, you also have the party move, but like, we won't have to worry about move sets for FNAF World yet. That's a headache for another day in the future if I'm not lazy as hell. Um, auto regen, I'd consider mediocre. Because the healing you get is not good. To put it simply, auto regen is similar to if you had one of the med bites from Wolbit purchased. It's that slow on the regenerate. The the regeneration is really not much. Plus, like you really would not need regen. Actually, now that I think about it, I consider it a bad chip. Like, it's really a waste of a slot. You're not going to get that much healing. And once again, some bosses will actually do a lot more damage than your healing. So, like, e even with the auto regen, your healing, like, your, your one to two healer characters are more than enough to suffice for the damage taken. So there's really not much purpose in having auto regen in the first place. And of course, you know, every comment strong and uh, mediocre. Um yes, it's better than ever comic weak, but again, same issues, but it does have better damage output and I believe it does come much more often, but still it's not really that much of a good chip at all. Um Auto gift boxes. I'd put that as one of the best chips. Now, why would I put this at one of the best chip tiers? Well, when you start some battles, sometimes a boss will actually be able to kill off one of your characters, even one of your most important characters, immediately. Bosses tend to have like a faster attack rate than others um super goon would actually be the most notable here because super goon it attacks fast same with um one of the endo bosses in black tomb yard for one of the four switches that is also very fast in its attack rate 
auto gift boxes really nullifies the chances of you losing your best character. Especially if it's the one that has the gift box move and you're not using quick start. Like, in general, it's a very, it's, it has to be one of the best, for sure. Like, even in speedruns, this chip is used because of its usefulness. Now, not all speedruns will use this chip, but, like, I'd say, like, for speedruns that require the rainbow ending to be killed, not including the actual rainbow ending boss itself, as that sort of speedrun, but, like, in general runs where you have to do other objectives while also having to complete the chipper ending, rainbow ending, even the anim dude ending, like... Those three bosses can easily take out your characters quick. So having auto get boxes is a must. Even security, if you do not have auto shield, like auto get boxes, well, it's not even like security. Like if you're in one of the three out of bounds locations, um, the enemies can use alarm against you and if you have auto get boxes, you you can basically nullify the entire attack, say for maybe losing one character because there's a chance that it can shoot three up to five projectiles. So if you get the worst outcome, you only lose one character at worst, which is actually pretty good considering its use. Um find characters. I'd actually consider this average. Now, <laughs> I may be told, why the hell am I considering this chip average for what it's worth? Actually, because en endless speeds, like, actually, I'd actually change my mind on head start speed from earlier. I'll actually put that back to um, an average tier. Because again, strength and defense is really not that much in terms of early game. I guess defense early game is pretty good, but like n defense chips are not really that great. Trust me. Like you're better off leveling up your character and then moving on to the next area. English, English. Oh Jesus. Uh, yeah, before you move on to the next area, like, it's good to just always level up your characters as much as you can. But yeah, head start speed, I, I consider it average because at least for quick battles, like, if you want a battle to go quick, head start speed for early game will definitely make a use, but then again, endless speed will obviously outclass it. Um... But yeah, the reason why I'm putting fine characters as an average tier is because, yes, while it does have its use in being one of the greatest chips in the game for finding characters, over time it actually doesn't matter. Now, why is that? Well, yes, it, it does help increase the chances of you finding a character, but... For, for whatever reason, this game has an issue with you forcing a restart. Because one of the F keys restarts the game for you. And by doing so, for some reason, it resets the RNG counter or something. Whatever it was that we discovered f that makes finding characters harder. Which is why 157% was like really hard to optimize at all even with the gold endo strat because of you actually manually restarting the game like not closing and reopening it like just hitting the f key like one of the f keys of the 12 on the top of your keyboard to restart the game that way so um fine characters doesn't really have that much of a great use once you've already gotten a majority of the characters it's not bad but like yes it's good but it's only temporary 
like realistically find characters could be its own separate category it could be one of the best ships of the game to one of the worst because once you 100% of the entire game find characters is a completely useless chip and would be considered a bad tier but at the same time it could be one of the best chips because you actually get to find more characters so all in all like it's average in 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 this case <sighs> I guess that would sum up the blue chips. As you can see, none of the green chips are in the best here. Like, block jump scare is good, but it's obviously not the best. Um, run luck, it could be the best, but not exactly. Because, th think of it this way. Yeah, sprung lock increases your chances of running way easier. But there's still that chance that even with run lock, you could still get horrible RNG. It's good, but it's not exactly the best. And quick start party, it, it, it's just good for that first attack. Plus, it actually makes going for one-shot kills on bosses easier this way. But all in all, it's not that much. But it still has a pretty good use in general. But yeah, um, now we can move on to the red chips. The bread and butter that we're all waiting for. Immediately, auto shield is being thrown into the best because it's a fucking must. Trust me, whenever you're trying to beat the game at all, you're always going to need auto shield. If by chance you didn't, I mean, I think we've already beaten the game without auto shield. It's been a while, but like, auto shield really helps because security is bullshit. With, with without it. Like, not only do you need, like, some of the best luck in the game, but, like, you also have to make sure that you don't lose all your gift box characters. But, like, auto gift boxes, auto shield, like, very, very common to see. And plus, auto shield really nullifies the amount of damage you take. This is why, like, head start defense and endless defense are as they are. Because auto shield gives you so much more defense than the defense chips themselves. It's just natural. Um, next one. Um, block unscrew. I would consider this a good chip. And I wouldn't consider it the best, but it's really good. Now. In terms of Nuzlocke challenge, um, block unscrew would actually be one of your best chips. Because if you lose a character from unscrew, you can't get them back. Unfortunate, I know, but that's the truth. And then auto get boxes would be its own separate category. It would be called the banned category because you can't use it. Except for like the old version of Nuzlocke and Nuzlocke 1.0. Or Nuzlocke 100. Yeah, Nuzlocke 100 and Nuzlocke in the first version of the Nuzlocke challenge would on, would be the only exceptions to the get box chip being used, but otherwise it's banned. But on block unscrew, it does help a lot because some bosses will unscrew, and ooh, it's not fun. It's really not fun. I mean, in a speedrunning sense, like, this would definitely be a lower chip. But again, in general, this is a really good chip to have. I don't know how late you get this in the game, but, like, again, it's very useful in battles, at least. Yeah, because it just nullifies... A boss being able to use that ability. 
So it does make a lot of sense that way. Okay. Ooh, now we're coming into the more questionable red chips. These ones. Um... <laughs> oh, I'm gonna love this. Um, curse status. I actually once considered this one of the best chips, but I actually consider it an average one. Now, what curse status does is it debuffs everything about the boss and enemies, reduces their speed, reduces their strength, and it reduces their defense. Now, it's not the entire battle, this is like the head start chips, but curse status is pretty good for what it is, but it's not exactly the best. Like, you, you can still make do without curse status, and bosses like Chipper, Security, Anim Dude, Rainbow, curse status is useless. It's pretty much a useless chip. But I'd still consider it average for what it's worth. So there's at least that hope to that. Um, okay, um, we're now down to the final four. <laughs> I can already see opinions about the final chips, but, like, I have my own, too. I, I've i used them all. I, I have used every single chip in the past, trust me. I've made use of these chips at one point, but trust me, some I knew were not as great, but I could use them as placeholders anyway. Um, I'd actually put Counterbite as an average. I'd put Counterbite as average because what Counterbite does specifically is when you get attacked, your characters will actually rebound and attack back to your enemy. This does quite a bit of damage. It, it definitely does. Over time, if, like, let's say you take at least one damage, then, like, the, the only time Counterbite is actually useless is when you have an enemy that can't do damage to you. So because it can't do damage, it can't react with an attack. But it's pretty good in the sense that, like, even if you take just at least one damage, the game will actually do a counterattack for quite a good sum of damage. And it, trust me, it's definitely better than the Ever Comet chips because, one, it's tied into how often the enemies attack you. So even in normal battles, it's very good because you get that damage output over time much, much sooner and much, much faster. But at the same time, you know, you also have to make sure that, like, you don't kill your own characters using this chip, because, again, while it's useful, you still have to keep in mind of keeping your characters alive to even make use of this, and making sure they actually do take damage. Which, of course, in general, you don't want to take damage in a game like FNAF World, where you are basically fighting in an RPG style. Um, but yeah, I, I consider it average for what it is. Like, you may use it, you may not. It just depends on what you feel on it. So, it's a bit of a mixed. Um... Ooh, now, I know there's a lot of people out there that would consider this, like, one of the best chips, or a good chip. I'd consider it fucking, <laughs> oh god, either one of these two. Um, yeah, actually, no, nah, I consider this a bad chip. I'd consider it bad because... 
well, yes, you you can duplicate attacks. Now, if you have two characters that have the same move and you get them back to back, auto mimic is not going to mimic both attacks. It's only going to mimic the one, the first one. So that's one reason why it's bad. Second, it takes a while for that second duplication, like for the duplication of the attack that you last used to actually be in use. And because you're doing it on all the characters, your attack output, like your attack damage output is going to be very low compared to not using this. I mean, there was always a debate on these chips, especially Automimic, because, like, you, you can use Mimic Ball, and you can make use of that. So, like, Automimic, like, yes, it can mimic during the entire battle, but, you know, Auto mimic doesn't actually help with everything. Like, it makes your attack speed slower for all of your characters. Unless you have a duplicate character attack, in which, in that case, is not even going to duplicate anything. But even then, like, why, why bother? Like, e even the fastest attacks in the game will still take quite a while, and longer than some of the longest attacks. So, you, you kind of have to, like, think, do you want to sacrifice Auto Mimic with, like, a chip like Endless Speed and Quick Start Party? Where, like, you know, you can constantly output attacks. Like, yes, you're going to be outputting several rounds of your party's attacks at once. With Auto Mimic, the thing is, Endless Speed, it does it much faster. And you cycle through quickly. So, you know... Like... Here's a good example of how Automimic can be very, very bad. If you're using a chip like, um, Pizza Wheel... Or, not chip, um, if you're using the Pizza Wheel attack... And you get the longest version, which is the best attack damage variant... If you realize that you're going to have to go through that animation twice, including the delay between the original attack to the duplicated, you realize that's quite a long attack. It could probably take you anywhere from like 8 to like 11 seconds with um, Pizza Wheel 1. Just... Even Pizza Wheel 2 at its best will still take quite a while. Like, that's how bad Auto Mimic is. Like, you could get, like, several rounds of other high damage attacks in that time span with just endless speed. So, you know, Auto Mimic, really, really not. Like, it sounds good on paper, but it, it just doesn't. And now we're down to the Fury Attacks. I'd consider... Okay. Now, I'd actually put these two, both of them, on average. Um... I, I'd probably put Curse Status onto Mediocre. At least. Because again, like, not every boss is really useful, so it's quite mediocre. Like, yes, it's good for enemies, but for bosses, not so much. Nah, I'll, I'll take that back. I'll put it to average. Yeah, because if you're trying to, like, grind for stuff... It's average, if you're just killing enemies for the hell of it, just for XP. And, and then again, the slower speed actually does help. So, in a way, it, it, it does actually have some use, even on the 
most useless bosses. Actually, Rainbow would be the most useless for curse status because she doesn't actually have her own attack. Like, because she doesn't attack, she just has minions that spawn on their own that attack for her. But yeah, Pizza Fury and Fretal Fury by themselves, yeah, they do have good damage output over time, but again, it may not be the best. But yeah, there we go. I, I'd consider that a pretty good tier list, if I'm being honest. So yeah, you got a couple of the best chips in the game. You got some really good chips, which can be argued to be one of the best as well, but overall it's still good to have. And then you have your average tiers, which is a pretty good solid third, at least, within the game. And then, like, yeah, a good solid third are good to best tier. You got just about a third being mediocre, very bad, and useless chips. And then you have just, yeah, basically about a third on every single ranking. So, like, best to good is like a third there, average is about a third there, and then mediocre to bad is like a third there. So, yeah, in general, oh, yes, all these chips have their own uses. Some are not as great as others. And this way kind of gives you a representation of, like, for someone like me who's done speedruns of FNAF World, you can get an idea of, like, what chips I think are really good and which ones aren't. So, realistically, yeah, that would actually work. In any case, however, of course, you know, this is just only my taking. Once again, from someone who's done speedruns of the game and has spoken to my friends who've done speedruns of this game as well for a long time. But, you know, it gives you an insight of, like, you know, what I see is pretty useful in scenarios, which ones aren't, and just overall in general, what works and what doesn't. Because again, some things can obviously be situational, while others are really just there as a placeholder, really. <laughs> but yeah, in any case, I hope you enjoyed this little in-depth tier list of mine explaining which ones would be the best in the game, which ones would not, and which ones are just in the middle ground. Anyways, this is the Shepherd Killer, and I'll see you guys in my next video. See ya.